Good morning students. Welcome to physics class. We have introduced unit electrostatic. In electrostatic, I have introduced two, three topics. Related to that, I have already uploaded videos. If you want to uh, get good knowledge of this present concept, so you must watch those videos initially. Now coming to the next topic that is Coulomb's law. So according to Coulomb's law, force of interaction between any two point charges is directly proportional to product of the magnitude of charge and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them. Like this is a statement, you can learn this statement by the concept you have done in class 11. Like in 11th class, you have done the concept of gravitational force. Likewise, here we are talking about charge bodies, charge particles. And for that, you will learn force of interaction between those charge particles, charge bodies. Now, here according to this statement, this force. Now, you have to uh, take out your paper and pen. Pause the video in between so that you will be alert because now we have to do all the mathematical steps. So be careful, take out your notebook and pen and you will start, you will note down the things along with so that you will have more clarity. Here, force of interaction between the charged bodies that is proportional to, that is directly proportional to product of the charges and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them like these are two charges situated at q1 and q2 separated by distance r now when you are combining these two results you will get f is proportional to q1 q2 divided by r square now when you are removing this proportionality sign you will replace it by k symbol k where k is constant of proportionality and we take this symbol as electrostatic force constant. Here R is the separation distance between charge Q1 and Q2 and F is the force between them. Now you, do, you can note down all these points so that up to this point you, should, you will be clear. Where constant K. The value of K depend upon first point the nature of medium. So you have to note it down nature of medium separating the charges. Second on the system of unit. You have studied in class 11 there are different kind of system of units SI system, CGS system. So we will introduce it here also. Now K depend upon nature of medium as well as on system of units. Now when the charges are placed in free space, free space means air, vacuum, in that particular case, in SI system, you will have its value K, electrostatic force constant, having value 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Now, epsilon naught, this symbol, this you will pronounce as, I have written it, pronunciation is epsilon naught. Now, this is just the pronunciation. Now, exactly what the, this epsilon naught is called? It is called absolute electrical permittivity of free space. This is a constant. As for air, it is having fixed value. And its value is, you have to rem remember this value. You have to learn it. It will be used in the numericals. It is having value 8.85 into 10 raised to the power minus 12 coulomb square per newton per meter square. I am repeating this epsilon naught is having fixed value and its unit. I will, uh, you will see that I have explained this concept uh, also in the uh, next uh, part of this section that its unit is c square per newton per meter square. You can find its unit from the formula. Now, so force of interaction uh, between, uh, force of interaction between the charges in air being uh, we have used the same formula that we have introduced force of interaction between the charges in air or free space now here in the formula you have substituted the value of k 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 upon r square so f air that is force of interaction between two charges in air or vacuum now if you have to take the unit of epsilon naught, so I am in this formula, I have just taken the value of epsilon naught. So it comes out to be epsilon naught equal to 1 by 4 pi f q1 q2 by 
R square. So I have explained it for your convenience that for unit of epsilon naught here Q is a charge having unit coulomb again it is a charge having unit coulomb force F that is Newton R distance unit meter so meter square and 1 by 4 pi is a constant no unit. So unit unit comes out to be coulomb square per newton per meter square. Now the value of electrostatic force constant K is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Now, when you will substitute the value of epsilon naught here, you will get the value 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 uh, along with unit Newton meter square per coulomb square. This is fixed value and uh, you have to learn this value directly. You will put this value in the numericals. Is it clear to everyone? So, we have introduced force as K Q1 Q2 by R square. Now, on the basis of it, first of all, we will discuss simply conceptual points as if Q1 and Q2 both positive, this these two charges are positive, then what will be the effect on F or what information you will get about F that is force. When both product, uh, both the charges are multiplied, obviously the result will be positive then force F will be positive. What is the significance of positive force? It means there is a force of repulsion between charges. So recalling the point that like charges repel each other. We have also introduced al uh, already introduced this concept like charges repel each other. Similarly, if Q1 and Q2 are negative, both will be negative and in that particular case, again, uh, negative charges will product of negative charge will give you repulsive force so either the charges are positive or negative both the charges are positive or negative force will always be repulsive so on the basis of this uh, studied concept let me discuss few conceptual questions that are uh, that are from the board point of view important so coming to this question if a uh, question has been given that if q1 q2 product of charges is greater than zero then identify the nature of force between them product of the charge is greater than zero greater than zero means product is positive so it will lead to the force to be positive when force will be positive so it will be repulsive so it will be answered that the two charges are like and the product will be greater than zero and hence the force will be repulsive I think yeah, this concept is clear to you. Next concept we are taking, next question we are taking on the same point. If Q1, Q2 product less than 0, if the product of two charges is less than 0, identify the nature of force between them. So, uh, first of all think that when the product of two charge will be less than 0, it means simply you can say the product of charges is negative. It can be possible only if either of the charge is positive and the other is negative irrespective of the point it is q1 or q2 so if q1 is positive and q2 is negative or q1 is negative and q2 is positive therefore their product will be less than zero means negative and hence force will be negative so the force will be attractive in nature now next question we are taking again on the same concept here plot a graph showing variation of coulomb force with 1 by r square where r is the distance between two charges of each pair of charges 1 micro coulomb 2 micro coulomb and another pair is 2 micro coulomb and minus 3 micro coulomb and interpret the graphs obtained. So students now here the technical point is coming where you have to first of all read the statement carefully and then correlate which point can be applied here. So first of all in the statement there is a relation between force and distance. Now you have to plot graph between force and this one by r square that is a point you have to consider so coming to the formula again as you know that k is a constant q1 q2 are also 
spores uh, or also charges that are fixed for a particular pair and R is the separation. Now, here we will say that force is inversely proportional to R square, but force is directly proportional to 1 by R square. This is important point. You will, you have to learn this point. Force is directly proportional to R square. So here force is directly proportional to 1 by R square, not R square, directly proportional to 1 by R square. So therefore graph will be linear. Now coming to the graph, here on the axis, vertical axis, we have taken force. On the horizontal axis, we have taken 1 upon R square. Now, so the graph should be linear. This is giving the rough idea. Now coming to the pair of charges as 1 microcoulomb and 2 microcoulomb. Both are of same polarity, means like charges. So what you will say for, uh, that the product will be positive. So for positive product, force will be also positive. Now you can identify it, uh, you can judge it easily that force is positive, force will be repulsive. So here the graph will be linear for this pair. It is lying in the first quadrant because force is positive as the charges are like that. So that's why it is lying in the first quadrant. Coming to the next pair of charges, 2 microcoulomb and minus 3 microcoulomb. These are of opposite polarity. So corresponding to this, force will be negative. So negative force, that means force we have taken in the negative axis. Graph is linear, but it is negative. Why this is negative? Because the product is negative and the force is negative. It is giving the indication it is attractive. So, what does we conclude? Interpretation from the graph. What, are, what does we conclude? That for 1 microcoulomb and 2 microcoulomb, force is positive and hence repulsive. Whereas for 2 microcoulomb and minus 3 microcoulomb, force is negative. Hence, attractive. Now, one problem for your practice, plot graph between coulomb force and separation distance for pair of charges, pair of like charges, Q and Q. You will do it by yourself in your notebooks. Now, next we will define charge. So, here it is, here it is definition of SI unit of charge. Now, to define charge, basically, First of all, coming to the formula that force F equal to K Q1 Q2 by R square. So here charge is for this one coulomb is that charge which when placed one meter from an equal and similar charge in air or vacuum. Repel it with a force of 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 newton. So, you will do, you will just see the definition, 1 coulomb is that charge which when placed 1 meter from equal and similar charge in air or vacuum, repel it with a force of 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton. So, how it will be there? As we know in the formula, K, K is 9 into 10 to the power 9, this value is fixed. Q1, Q2 charge we have to de define are separation. So, if we take Q1, Q2 to be 1 coulomb and separation distance to be 1 meter. So, now both will be 1, denominator will be 1. Then force will be only 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 newton. So, it means in the definition when we have said that force of repulsion in the charges will be 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 newton. So, you have to learn this particular statement that is 1 coulomb charge. Now after defining this SI unit of charge we will just discuss some other unit of charges. This is CGS unit of charge. CGS unit of charge that is one electrostatic unit of charge and short form is ESU or another name we can give to it is one stat coulomb or one frankly. So in SI system and CGS system, there is a relation. You have to learn this relation. 1 coulomb is 3 into 10 raised to the power 9 stat coulomb. 
so si and cgs unit conversion so you must be you must know you must learn this so that uh, this will help you in solving the numericals now other unit is electromagnetic unit of charge emu is the symbolic presentation you will use um, in many a times now here one electromagnetic unit is also related to this uh, cgs unit as well as si unit so one electromagnetic unit is 3 into 10 to the power 10 electrostatic unit that is cgs unit and equal to 10 coulomb that is si unit so you have to learn these three relations 1 coulomb 3 into 10 to the power 9 electromagnetic unit and the relation of electromagnetic unit is with the cgs unit and si unit these values you have to learn so this is uh, we have dis uh, discussed some basic concepts about coulomb's law now so a few points you must be familiar you must know what are the main points about coulomb's law this law is valid only for point charges so what why we are taking point charges actually there is not, no concept of point charges but as you have studied the concept of point mass in class 11 where point mass was compared that is the mass of the body was compared with the distance covered likewise here the size of the charged body is compared with the separation between the charges so when separation between charges is larger as compared to the size of charged body so size of the body will be ignored so and hence you can say charged bodies are treated as point charge now next is permittivity permittivity is a measure of degree to which a medium can resist the movement of charges we have discussed absolute permittivity of air now here permittivity that is giving the opposition to the movement of charges so it is the significant it is the main point you have to remember now next in, in another important point Coulomb's law is not valid if separation distance is less than 10 to the power minus 15 meter that is very small that are or comparable with the dimensions of atom. Now these were the points we have to just remember this can be utilized in conceptual problems. Now when very important point that will be used in NCRT numericals also uh, if we take a metallic sphere if it is carrying charge Q and it is brought in contact with identical uncharged sphere. One sphere is positively charged or Q charge, another is uncharged. So when both are brought in contact with each other, then charge will be distributed equally on both. Conductors, these are conductors. So when these are brought in contact, then uniform distribution of charge will be there on each of the two sphere that will be q by 2 i am explaining it now see two spheres a initially a is carrying q charge b is uncharged when these are brought in contact now after contact a will get charge q by 2 and b will get charge q by 2 any charge will be equally distributed on both the metallic spheres now if sphere B is again brought in contact with any uncharged identical sphere, metallic sphere, again there will be redistribution of charges. So now each of B and C will attain Q by 4 charge. Now next topic is dielectric constant or relative per electrical permittivity. Now, as we have studied that force of interaction between the charges we have taken uh, in air only now. Now, when the medium is there, so here, when medium will be present, then how this formula will be replaced? Fm, that is force of interaction between the two charges in certain medium. Here, you will see in the formula, here we have written same two charges Q1, Q2, separation distance R. What change you are observing here? 1 by 4 pi epsilon epsilon not it is not there it is epsilon epsilon is absolute permittivity of intervening 
medium other than air. So Fm is the force between charges in medium. So when some medium is present in between the charges, then in that particular case, you will take the formula Fm is given by equation 1. Now, if we take the same two charges having the same separation and placed in free space air, then the formula will be replaced by F0. F0, not symbol we have uh, specified only for air, vacuum, free space, that is here it is epsilon naught. Now, here F0 is the force of interaction between same charges in air or vacuum. Now, to define the concept of dielectric constant, what we have to do, we have to divide equation 2 and equation 1. So, if you will divide F0 and Fm, here you are observing that Q1, Q2R is common in both and 4 pi is also common. So, common factor will cancel out when you will take the ratio. So, now what will you get? F0 upon Fm, that you will get to be epsilon upon epsilon naught that is relative electrical permittivity symbol represented epsilon and suffix small r or dielectric constant symbol represented by capital K. Now dielectric constant it is defined as the ratio of absolute electrical permittivity of the medium to the absolute electrical permittivity of free space this first part. Now, another way to define this dielectric constant is, it is also defined as the ratio of force between two charges in air and force between same two charges in any medium. So, now you have to learn this formula. K, this is taken as epsilon upon epsilon naught one formula. In terms of force, it is F naught upon Fm. So, this is a formula you have to learn and note in a separate uh, notebook, separate page. Now, on this basis, we will discuss two more cases. If dielectric constant is 1, what is the significance of it? Dielectric constant 1 and uh, or you can say electrical relative electrical permittivity is 1. So, K is 1. Epsilon R relative electrical permittivity 1. So, by the formula epsilon upon epsilon naught, this will be 1. What does it conclude? Epsilon is equal to epsilon naught. It means, it means permittivity of a medium, absolute electrical permittivity of the medium will be absolute electrical permittivity of the free space. Now, from the above formula, we can also get that as from this formula, Fm, uh, F0 upon Fm, this is equal to K. So now if you want to calculate the value of Fm, then Fm will be given by F0 upon K, where K is the dielectric constant. Now Fm is inversely proportional to dielectric constant. It means if K increases, force between the charges in a medium decreases. Now let me discuss one particular case on this, this basis, on this formula. If we are taking that the dielectric constant of water is 81. Now, formula in this formula, you can see dielectric constant K will be 81. So, Fm will be equal to F0 upon 81. Now, what is the significance of dielectric constant of water to be 81? For this, let me take an example of chemistry. In practicals, you have done salt analysis. In salt analysis, what you do? You simply take salt and dissolve in water to make aqueous solution. So why we are doing it? So when the salt is added in water, then the bonding between opposite ions in water will be loose. That will be reduced. So force with force of interaction between opposite, oppositely charged ions of the substance or the molecules will be reduced. So when water is added, force between oppositely charged ions of a substance in water become 1 by 81 of force between same opposite ions in air. So it means then the binding force between the salt molecules, salt, salt ions will be reduced when dissolving water. Dear students, you can make chapter wise list of formulas on separate sheet in your register. This will help you to learn all the formulas which will be further used in solving numericals and doing conceptual problems. 
with limited resources we are trying to help you all to learn the concepts in a better way now in this tough situation we all must follow the government instruction by staying at home so that we can defeat covid-19 stay home stay safe thank you